when people talk about Facebook and they're like, man, Facebook ads suck now and Instagram ads suck. The reality is they don't, they right. still crush it. There's more You're people just, shopping oh, online now than there was a while ago. <laughs> exactly. You're just scaling up the wrong campaigns because you're relying on the Facebook data. Hey guys, what's going on? Justin here once again. In this video, we actually have the founders of Comly, a really good ad tracking software, an actual replacement and supplement for the Facebook ad, you know, kind of current basis of tracking. It's a lot more accurate for purchases and actually seeing KPIs populate in your actual ad tracking, which is important for making determinations on purchases, et cetera, as you move forward and scale. Definitely like in the video and watch the entire video as well if you wanna see the exact kind of behind the scenes talk that we're having here with the founders of this ad tracking uh, software, which is great so you guys can get a better understanding as to how Facebook really works in a tracking standpoint. Watch the entire video, leave a like as well, and I'll see you at the end. Guys, I'm very excited because we have some really awesome people with us today, uh, my good friend Grant, as well as Matt, who are going to walk us through some of the back-end ideologies as well as back-end technicalities, okay, with pixel tracking as well as your data, right? These are the, the gentlemen who have actually created and founded commonly the tracking software that we utilize to go ahead and obviously track our own stores, which is really cool. For people that probably don't know us, we started, um, we started an ad agency probably like over 10 years ago. Um, and, uh, it was, it was literally first when, uh, you know, Facebook ads were, were just kind of like getting more popular in the space. And we had tons of different clients. A lot of them were, were online brands that were, were using, you know, Shopify. And, and at that time, you know, WooCommerce was big and stuff like that. We had like all these different types of clients and that was going well. So, so we had all these, um, you know, running Facebook ads and, and all that stuff. And then ultimately we ended up selling that agency. Um, and then we started a couple other businesses, but we've literally been running Facebook ads. I, uh, I always joke with Matt. I'm like, dude, we've been in the face. Like every day we wake up, we've gone into the Facebook ads manager every day of our lives for the last like over 10 years. Right. And, um, and what's crazy is the fact that you guys actually understand it from a core component level. Right. And that's why you're able to make the changes in the actual targeting and actually build software that can actually enable you to track better is because this is built by people who are advertisers. Right. Which is really cool. And that's, I'm sure how you guys kind of saw the need for this as you progressed over those years of actually being in the marketplace. Is that right? We were literally running our own ads. Um, at the time we were doing heavy, heavy affiliate marketing, but also, you know, e-com and Shopify. Right. And even prior to iOS 14, like I'm sure a lot of people on the call will know, like the tracking was always, it was better. It was never still, great. Yeah, it was never <laughs> yeah. great. And so we were like, dude, we need to figure this out. And so we literally, the first time, like we hired developers, it wasn't to build commonly. It was actually to build like our own kind of tracking solution, um, which like a lot of people, you know, in like different Facebook groups and stuff like they're, they're still trying to do. And I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, it's, it's so hard. Um, so we were doing like server side tracking, hiring developers, UTM parameters, like all this stuff we can kind of get into, but none of it really was perfect. Um, and then uh, we really kind of, we, we sort of unlocked the secret key, which was, we had uh, our CTO now, John, um, he's just an unbelievable developer, unreal experience. And he kind of brought us through like the reason why things aren't working and how we could actually have a, a pretty, a pretty cutting edge advantage. And so that's really where we came up with Cometly, um, started tracking our own ads with it, saw unreal results. Um, and then from there, we started having all of our uh, like different friends and colleagues. They were like, yo, we need to get our hands on this thing. So that's where we started to then build it out for, for kind of mass market appeal. The best way to probably describe what's happened with, with iOS 14 and, and tracking, um, it really comes down to two things, right? The first is visibility, okay? Visibility meaning like literally when I'm looking at my ads manager, how do I know which ones are actually getting purchases and what's the value of the revenue? And how do I know which ones are not, right? And it's pretty self-explanatory. Everybody in here is, is Vance. It's like, okay, I wanna know which ones are getting sales so I can scale. And I wanna know which ones are not getting sales so I can kill. So just visibility is one part, um, which is exactly what Cometly solves fully. What specifically is it that enables Cometly to track that data rather than Facebook not being able to? The sad reality is that what we're doing, yeah, it's pretty technical and it gets advanced and we can get into that, but it's not necessarily what Cometly is doing. It's what Facebook stopped doing. Can they still track the ads perfectly and have perfect visibility? Yeah, they could, but now with Apple's iOS, they're like, okay, if you do that, uh, we're just going to take you right off of the app store. 
boom, they're gone, right? <laughs> they kick them off the app store for not they know, abiding. They know who, who the Don is, right? So they got to go ahead and stay in line. <laughs> exactly. So that's where we are able to track people the exact way that Facebook used to and without any sort of repercussions against Apple. Apple's not coming for Comet.ly. Every single ad has an ad ID, right? So anytime a user clicks, uh, like a Facebook user, Instagram user, um, soon to be TikTok, Google, as soon as you click an ad, right, that parameter, that ad ID gets passed through to your store. It doesn't matter if you're going to a collection page, if you're going to a specific product page, um, our Comet.ly pixel is on your store. You know, what's happening sometimes, like if somebody clicks an ad and it redirects and, you know, Facebook does its thing and it strips the parameters, which does happen, we still pick up that ad ID every time. So that's the first point of the customer journey. So what happens is if somebody, you know, will process an order and they, they buy something from your store, um, you know, step one, we look for, you know, in the order, is there a parameter? Sometimes there is, and you'll see that in your Shopify reporting. But most of the time there's not um, because maybe they're coming back at, you know, to the store directly. But if, um, what, if there is nothing on that actual order and that ad ID, we actually will call the pixel and we actually look specifically for, um, we have a bunch of different parameters. We'll look for that ad ID for their first uh, visit of their journey, right? And then that way within a 28 day window, we could attribute back to that correct sale. And we do have like, you know, the first click and last click attribution. So if they come from different ads, you can see. So one of the things we get a lot um, is, you know, oh, okay, well, why don't I just set up UTM parameters, right? right and for each specific ad. Exactly, right. And guess what? UTM parameters, they work, but they only work in, somebody said the other day, it's like, oh, UTM parameters, that's only one day uh, attribution. And I'm like, no, you're wrong. It's one visit attribution, okay? So literally if somebody clicks on your ad and you have a UTM parameter on and they're on your store from that ad, if they buy during that same one, that visit, that will track perfectly, right. okay? Back to the UTM. But if they leave, if they X off the store, they're like, oh shoot, like, ooh, I wanna open that back up. They reopen a new session <laughs> then they buy, the UTM parameter will not track them. So that's where Matt just described perfectly the Cometly pixel, right? What happens when somebody hits your store, we have the ad ID parameter directly on there, okay? Let's say then they leave and they come back seven days later. The Cometly pixel is able to basically look back on that first very visit, find the parameter, look at the user agent, the IP address, the Facebook click ID, all of that data that we've captured on the first visit. We're then seven days later, this person goes to buy, we're then able to look back on the very first visit, match the IP, the user agent, the Facebook click ID. Then we, because they bought, we get the email, we get all that information. We're able to make that connection. Now I'm using a seven day later example. Comically tracks attribution for a full 28 days, um, which, is, which is unreal because you know, a lot of people, especially on this call, like if you guys sell high ticket items, right? If you, if you're, if your average order value is in the hundreds of dollars, <clears throat> say, let's say you're selling watches, how many people hit the store and buy an expensive item on their first visit? Not many, right? Not many at all. Now to get into a little strategy here, it's like, okay, you're probably going to be running some cold traffic campaigns. You're going to be running some retargeting. You're going to be running those things, right? Well, do you want, you know, you get to pick and choose. Do you want your retargeting ad to get all of the credit for your sales? Because of course, retargeting ads bring in a boatload of sales, yeah, right? right? But what if we also want to see like, okay, cool. I know my retargeting ads cleaning them up, but I kind of want to know the first ad that they clicked. I want to know which one is working on the top of the very funnel. useful data. I love it. Keep going. <laughs> exactly. So in that situation, Comet.ly is literally able to show you that in your account. It's like, okay, last click attribution in Comet.ly, you're going to see probably the majority of the sales on the bottom of the funnel and the retargeting <clears> campaign. But when you go ahead and click uh, on, on, you just select first click on Comet.ly, it's going to then show you your top of funnel stats for all of your ad campaigns. So you actually know what freaking ads are driving people in the first place. So when Matt and I developed this, we designed this. Actually, it's funny. We had a designer we hired and he was like, no, nobody's really going to want these tabs up top. Nobody's be like, man, go sit in the corner. Um, you know, that's, <laughs> that's just not going to happen. We want this to look like Exactly like the Facebook ads manager. And, and I think that's so ad. smart, right? Because the, the people want to be in the ads manager. It's just too damn clunky. One, and two, it doesn't work, right? So this was a great UI move, in my opinion. 100%.
And so, um, yeah, so we literally, uh, prior to literally yesterday, uh, in order for, you know, Comet was just a pretty much an ad, you know, an um, uh, analytics tool, right? You, you would come in here and you'd look at your stats and you'd be able to look at like what's, you know, what's working, what's getting sales and what's not. Um, now you can literally use Comet to actually, you know, change your budgets, turn things on and off um, and, you know, optimize and manage. Um, so it's, it's really, really cool because now the biggest headache for people was like, okay, looking at which works in Comet.ly and then changing my tabs and then going there and then going there. Oops, did I do the wrong ad set? Huge pain in the ass. So like literally now they can come in, they can literally go ahead and turn something on um, or they can go ahead and, you know, it tells you, oh, you just made it active. You can turn it off. Um, if I want to increase this to, you know, 40 bucks I can go 40 <clears throat> and update the actual budgets on these. Um, and then the other thing, which has been absolute game changer, we added these new metrics and this is where uh, it's just a total game changer. So at first we were just tracking your real purchases, right? Commonly would show you exactly which purchases you got, uh, what the actual revenue was, the real revenue here. Um, now we decided to pull in the data from Facebook. So literally what Facebook shows inside your actual ads manager, the inaccurate stuff, uh, we pulled that in so that you can literally compare the data side by side. For example, this, uh, this ad set right up top, Facebook says you got 12 purchases and you know, $368 in revenue, but that's not true. Commonly tracked 14 purchases and $502 in revenue. Right. And, so, and Grant, so many times there's like, it'll net, like Facebook is never accurate to your dashboard and Shopify. Right. And a lot of the time it's annoying, especially for my people who are new and using the systems, right. They're, they're getting sales. They want to scale or they want to scale back, but they don't see specifically if that sales coming in, but they see it on their dashboard. It's a big headache. So going back and forth and seeing how bad Facebook is reporting compared to what you're actually doing is yes. really, really smart because it ultimately reinforces why you're using this software in the first place. You nailed it. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the biggest things is like that. It's exactly that. It's the Facebook, uh, it's the conversion value, the conversion value. And this was pre iOS 14. This shit was <laughs> never accurate ever, 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 it, ever. It never was no, ne never, ever. Like literally it was ne even when people thought it was great, it was never actually 100% accurate ever. Exactly. So literally um, now with our, like the actual revenue we're pulling in, um, that comes directly from Shopify. So commonly has an app in the Shopify app store, we hook up literally to the API and the data that we're pulling is directly from the API. So our actual Facebook stats in here, these gross revenue numbers, they are dead accurate. Um, which is why you'll see, you know, the difference <laughs> from here. So we added this column to Facebook reported versus real. This is all of the money that Facebook's missing. So if I total it up at the bottom, this is a small sample, but $355. Um, this was a, this was a small little test store that we ran for a, a minute just to capture. Right, but it, it shows the point. But literally maximize this times this by 10 times this by a hundred. What if this wasn't 14 purchases? What if this was 1400? This was 1200. What if this was, you know, not $133, but it was $13,000. So, right. you know, as you scale, these numbers go bigger and bigger and bigger and it's, it gets harder and harder. Right? So this is a perfect example here. Like, you know, this, um, uh, let's see, right you know, here, right? So literally Facebook says, oh, you try, you know, two sales. Uh, they didn't even report on the revenue at all, but they said, hey, you got two sales. The revenue, we have no idea. Comet is like, no, we didn't get two. We got one sale and it was for 28 bucks. Um, but here's another actual, let me see if I, yeah, let me pop this open. Cause actually I was looking at this. This is another example. Um, so this here, what we're looking at is uh, Facebook is saying we got six purchases on this campaign right here. Um, on this store where we run super low volume, so we can look at these actual numbers and, and in Shopify compare in Shopify, we got three purchases and it literally was for 290 or I'm sorry, it was for $77 right over here. This is the actual number. We can drag this over. And this is the gross revenue. This was dead accurate from Shopify. Facebook was like, no, you got six and it was for 294. Now, if we actually scaled this up, if we scaled up this campaign based on Facebook's numbers. We, it was a loser, right? It was a total loser of, of an actual campaign, but that's what people are doing right now. So Justin, when people talk about Facebook and they're like, man, Facebook ads suck now and Instagram ads suck. The reality is they don't, they right. still crush it. There's more You're people shopping scaling. online now than there was a while ago. <laughs> exactly. You're just scaling up the wrong campaigns because you're relying on the Facebook data. 
So that's really the main difference and it's mind blowing. Right. And that's why I love the software is because it actually works and actually helps you make more money and make better decisions. And quite frankly, when you're following three day rule and all these KPI guidelines, you have to make good decisions based off of the real KPI rulings. So with that being said, okay, so it shows you Facebook versus what's real, which is awesome. Okay. Now what steps are there after once you integrate it, you don't have to do much. Like what, what, like walk us through, like, all right, you, you get it set up, you, you get it in, integrate with your store, get the pixel code in there. Then what it's kind of hands-free then, then after, right? Like it's, it takes literally 10 minutes. It's, it's so fast. Easy. Yeah. I mean, guys really you just create an account. Um, right after you create an account, you synchronize your Facebook profile, you select which ad accounts you want to connect. You could have, you know, you can connect 10, 20, 30 ad accounts. Um, if you have other profiles, you can, Create, you know, add team members um, and have them connect their profile. Um, so you can do all of that in your account and literally one click Facebook integration, one click Shopify integration, same way as other apps. Um, from there, super simple setup. All we need on your ads is you can choose any uh, UTM parameter, you any URL parameter, and you just have to have the ad ID, the dynamic ad ID. Um, as soon as you have that, we're able to start picking up sales. I was going to say, one of the things about setup guys, like when we, when we built Cometly was, you know, we, there were other trackers out there and it was insane. It was like, in order to set it up, you had to, you, they forced you to book a call. Then they, then it was like, oh my God, you have to do all this stuff. It takes a week. Uh, sometimes it takes two weeks. It was just absolute insane. So Matt and I said to ourselves, we said, okay, this is not going to be that case. We want someone to be able to sign up and literally within no exaggeration, within 15 minutes of signing up, we want them to be able to start tracking their ads. And so like Matt described, it's a one click to Shopify. It's a one click to Facebook. One tiny little pixel goes on your website. And then literally within 15 minutes, you can be tracking your ads. So that's what we sort of saw. We like, we want this to be so seamless. And then of course, like we have a whole team of account executives that, you know, Hey, if you're struggling with setup, you literally can book a call. They're going to jump on a call with you. Um, they're all located here in Philly. So it's, it's perfect. Okay. Ladies and gents, hopefully you enjoyed that incredible, incredible walkthrough of commonly and exactly what's going on behind the scenes with Facebook ad tracking and what I'm using to even track my own brands, guys. So definitely leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel as well. If you enjoyed, hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.